great job. Jamie Foxx came across to me as the only fucking person in the entire movie that even gave a shit. When he's acting in the film, you can tell that he's at least trying, but watching literally any other character in the film gives me the impression that they all knew it was going to be a giant piece of shit. The entire time I watched this movie, I felt like I was watching a crew full of people that just wanted to go home. So Max gets told to stay at work later because of something with the power grid that he needs to fix. And oh no, he has a workplace accident that sets things up for his superpowers later. He gets electrocuted by a cable and then falls into an inexplicably placed tub of electric eels. I don't know, it's there for science or something. And as he's getting electrocuted inside the container of eels, it shows a close-up shot of the gap in his front teeth closing and fixing itself. And that was fucking hilarious. Like, okay, you want to do the whole cliche, like, oh, it's fixing his wounds sort of thing, even though it looks like he's dying. Uh. But why the fuck would it close the gap between his teeth and what's the point of that? Meanwhile, Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy have a completely fucking unbearable romance sub Plot. She's gotten some information that she gets accepted to an Oxford Scholars program, so she's thinking about leaving. I have to go to England, Peter. It's important to me. It's very complicated for Gwen and for him. You cannot always have what you want. I'm moving to England. I moved for a scholarship to Oxford. I hate you, but now I love you again, but now I hate you, but now I love you, now I hate you, but I have to go to England, but I hate you, but I love you. I kid you not, there was a scene where Gwen Stacy said, I break up with you, Peter. I break up with you. Not like I'm breaking up with you or something that a normal human being would say. And instead of leaving or going home or something, she just walks into a Chinese restaurant and sits down. Like, I don't know if she was expecting him to come inside or leave or what. We were just going different way. I don't Go. God, their horribly written romantic dialogue made me feel like I was watching Birdemic again. Haha, <laughs> your laugh isn't annoying yet. You should have a more annoying laugh. Like this, he he he, I'm gonna make an ugly face and have an intentionally annoying laugh and this is how people communicate with each other. The stupid fucking obligatory love interest character bullshit takes up so much of the movie that after a certain point, every time I see her on screen, I just wanna punch her in her face. But only assuming she has a sex change operation in the time it takes for my fist to connect. Because making jokes that include violence against women is wrong. So we see Max's body on a gurney in a crematorium. Not actually in the fire yet, just in the middle of the open. Just, I know somebody left the room or something. For whatever reason, he's got a thick crust covering his skin because that's what happens when you get electrocuted. He breaks through the crust and leaves the building wearing a hoodie. I guess if he started walking around naked, he'd look too much like Dr. Manhattan. So he slowly walks down the street being compelled by, well, I don't know, unintentionally setting off car alarms as he's walking just because of electricity. So he gets to Times Square and for whatever reason, all the people that are clearly using cell phones in front of him don't have that affected as well. Like, what exactly could he be emitting that's setting off car alarms but not affecting people's phones at all? Maybe they'd written it into the script and Sony was like, no, our phones are the best. So he pulls up a grate and decides to stick his hand into some electricity like fucking Crank 2. It's implied that this is what guided him here, but it doesn't really explain why. Like, was he running low on juice? Is he like a battery? When Electro wakes, he's thirsty for power. And of course, he wants to go to the most electric part of the city, so that takes him to the time to the most electrical part of the city is Times Square. Not that massive fucking power plant with all those electrical transformers near the end of the film. I think what he really means to say is that he went to Times Square because this is where we can sell the most ad space. So people start freaking out and he's like, I'm sorry, except he doesn't know his own powers and strength. So he accidentally destroys a bunch of shit. Like I think he accidentally flipped over a car or something. So in the midst of the implied chaos, we get the stereotypical shot of people running around, except the directing is so fucking bad that you can literally imagine point A and point B of where he told them to run. Zero effort was made to make it look natural and even the least bit chaotic. You could almost imagine Mark Webb saying, okay, you 10 people stand over here and then just run to that point right there. Okay, go, no, no, just go already. I need to go home. I don't want to be here. Okay, good. We got the shot. No, nah, no, nah, it looks fine. We're good. And Spider-Man just happens to observe this from about a mile away, so he decides to come help. And as soon as Spider-Man shows up, he knows fucking everything about this guy and his powers for no reason. He's like, whoa, buddy, watch where you step. If you step on that grate, you might accidentally electrocute people over there. Yep, makes sense to me. I mean, he does have computer-generated blue all over him. That's what electricity looks like, right? Now, Max fucking loves Spider-Man, but in about 30 seconds, his mind will be changed completely. The script needs him to hate Spider-Man so that there's a villain but clearly nobody there gives enough of a shit to bother developing it. You don't remember me? Of course I remember you. You're my engineer. Uh, what's, what's your name again? Oh, I do. I know it. I know it. Don't tell me. It's Max. It's a Max? Yeah. How could you forget me? 